Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. Uh huh. He took the blind man by uh-huh. the hand and led him outside the village. Mm-hmm. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, mm-hmm. Jesus asked, mm-hmm. do you see anything? Mm-hmm. He looked up and said, I see people. Mm-hmm. They look like trees mm-hmm. walking around. Mm-hmm. Mark chapter 8, verse 25. Mm-hmm. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Yes. Then his eyes were open. Hallelujah. Stop right there. So touch me one more time. That's the word for today. Hallelujah. You can help us. Amen. Uh, I will invite uh, Pastor Martin. Uh, that's uh, chapter, the book of uh, Matthew chapter, Mark. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. You have a different verse on the screen. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 8 from uh, verse 22. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So shall we pray. Father God, I bless your name, Lord God, for all that you do, for your goodness and your mercy. I thank you, Lord God, for leading us and directing our path. I thank you, Lord God, that you honor your name among us, that you do your word and that you do your work in us and through us. Let your spirit, Lord God, speak. Let your spirit, Lord God, saturate us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I will invite Pastor Martin. Please come. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 8. You can use the Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. I need a touch from the Lord. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. I need a touch. I need a touch from the Master. I need a touch from the Lord. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. Touch me one more time. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. Touch me one more time. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. Touch me one more time. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. Touch me one more time. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. I need a touch from you. I need a touch from the Master. I need a touch from the Lord. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. I need a touch from you. I need a touch from the master. I need a touch from the Lord. I need a touch me one more time. Oh Lord. I need a touch. I need a touch from the master. I need a touch from the Lord. Touch me one more time. Oh Lord, I need a touch from you. I need a touch from the Master. I need a touch from the Lord. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Can we read? Mark chapter 8, verse 22. And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. Verse 23. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw out. And he looked up. And said, I see men as trees walking. 
After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up, and he was restored, and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town, nor tell it to any in the town. And Jesus went out and his, and his disciples into the towns of Caesarea, Caesarea, Philippi, and by the way he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Whom do men say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist. But some say, Elias, and others, one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say he that I am? And Peter answered and said unto him, Thou art the Christ. Amen. Verse 30. Yeah. Verse 30. And he, and he charged them that they should tell no man of him. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to thank God for this opportunity and to thank the man of God this wonderful opportunity in order to share the word of God to God's people. Hallelujah. It's, it's always a privilege <laughs> to share the word of God. Amen. I believe God has a word for somebody. He has a word for me. He has a word for you. And the word is touch me one more time. He has been touching us. Even while we we never we have we, we didn't come to the knowledge of Christ, we have received the love of God. Talk less of now that we are in the faith, now that we have acknowledged him as our Lord and Savior. So I see God touching us every uh, every minute, every second of our life. Because it is, in, it is in his nature for him to touch us, to bless us. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so the text of today, Mark chapter 8, the Bible says, he, he, Then he comes to baptize and they brought a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. So there was a special case that a man that was blind, I believe they must have taken him to other places for solution, and they didn't find help. And the head of the testimonies that people have been gotten who came to Christ, and they decided to bring this man to Jesus because they knew when they bring him to Jesus, his situation will never remain the same. Everyone who came to Christ believing in him always received a miracle. Hallelujah. And so they brought this man to Christ. The Bible says they besought him to touch him, that he should just touch the man. They believed, the people who came with him, they had faith that if Christ can only touch this man, then the man will be made whole. Then the man will receive his sight. Just like you and I, whenever we have a challenge, whenever we call on God, we believe that God has the answer to whatever challenge that we are going through. Hallelujah. So their faith was in Christ. It means they found somebody who has the solution that they are looking for. Whenever you have a challenge, who do you run to? Whenever there is a situation that is beyond your control, either from your own personal life or from your family or your career where you are working uh, among your colleagues, who do you mention to be the solution of that problem, of that challenge? I believe the first person that should come into your heart into your mind should be Christ because he, he has the key of every challenge that we are going through in life. In Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. So they brought a blind man to him. Why? What happened to this man that he was blind? In this particular case, we didn't, it is not mentioned, unlike in John chapter 9, the, the, the people were attributing it to sin. But Jesus said, it is neither this man or his parent that sin. But this situation was meant for the glory of God. Hallelujah. It means whatever we go through in life, you can never take God on our way because he's always prepared to set us free. Hallelujah. It is, whenever it is affliction, it doesn't come from God. Affliction comes from the devil. The Bible says the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So I don't know what must have caused the blindness of this man. But one thing that is for sure is that they identify the person that has the solution to that blindness, which is Christ. Hallelujah. There are some root cause of our challenges that we cannot trace. We don't know where it comes from. But one thing is certain, that when we take it to God, he will give us a lasting solution. Hallelujah. All we need to do is to believe. All we need to, to do is to believe in Christ, that he is able to do it, and he will do it for us. Hallelujah. Can I get an amplified version for this verse, verse 22? Mark chapter 8, verse 22. Then they came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man to Jesus and begged, and begged him to touch him. Taking the blind man by the hand, he... No, no, and another 22. Amen. Hallelujah. Then they came to Bethsaida. And they brought a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. Verse 23, continue, amplified. Mark chapter 8, verse 23, amplified version. Taking the blind man by the hand, he led him out of the village. And after spitting on his eyes and laying his hands on him, he asked him, do you see anything? And he looked. And, and at verse 23. Yeah. Taking, I want us to look at the way he handled the situation. Hallelujah. The Bible says, when they brought the blind man unto him and besought him to touch him, the faith of the people were anchored unto Christ. And their request was so specific. The Bible says they wanted him to touch the man because they believe from the testimonies they have been getting from others that when Jesus pray or touch or speak a word into your life, whatever the challenge was, the people will always get a solution. So this time around, they said they wanted him to touch him. But he did not touch him at once. He allowed the Spirit of God in him to lead him on how the miracle was going to be performed. That's why it is called the walking of miracle. Hallelujah. God has so many ways of doing his, uh, uh, his work. Whenever you come to God, you might have a specific request. But the way he will do it, it will depend on how they all translate the, the way the Spirit of God in him would direct him to act. Hallelujah. They wanted him to touch him. He might as well touch him anywhere, whether on his head, on his uh, uh, feet, on his hand, and the miracle would still happen. But there was a specific way that God, Jesus, who is God, had to perform the miracle. So the Bible says he took the blind man by the hand. That alone is enough for the miracle to take place. But when he took him by the hand, the man did not see immediately. 
It means it was just a process. Hallelujah. The faith of the people was that Jesus should touch the man. When he took him by the hand, he already touched him. <laughs> Hallelujah. He already touched him. But the miracle was not complete. Because at that point, the man was supposed to start seeing based on the faith of the people towards Christ. Hallelujah. But how come he touched him by the hand, the man did not see at once? Hallelujah. That is what God should reveal to us. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he took the blind man by the hand. Yes. Taking the blind man. Mm -hmm. Taking the blind man by the hand, he led him out of the village. Two. Number one is he held his hand. He took the man, the blind man by the hand. Secondly, the Bible says he led him out of the village. You mean Beth Bethsaida was a village where they found him. So when he took the man by the hand, the second thing the Bible says was that he led him out of the village. He walked with him. He did not only hold the man by, by the hand according to the faith of the people, but he had to cover some distance with him to get out of the village. Hallelujah. Yet, the miracle has not taken place. But according to the faith of the people, they desire that Jesus should just touch the man, and the man will receive his healing. Continue, please. And after spitting on his eyes and laying his hands on him, he asked him, do you see anything? And he looked up and said. No, we are still in verse 23, please. Hold on. And after spitting on his eyes, he took him by the hand. The miracle did not take place immediately. He took him out of the village from where they were. Going out of the village, I believe they covered some miles while walking. And in the process of walking, the Bible says, spitting on his eyes, he spat on his eyes. Number four, and laying his hand on him. Where was his hand? <laughs> Hallelujah. He grabbed the man by the hand. They moved out of the village, I believe, I don't know the distance, but they cover some miles in order to get out of the village. And the Bible says, he went further to spit on the man's eye, which doesn't make sense. Hallelujah. He spat on his eyes and laying his hand, his hands, his both hands, hands with S. He grabbed the man with one hand. He took him out of the village. He spat on his eyes. This time around, the Bible says, he laying his hands, both hands. The people, their faith was that Jesus should just touch just with his finger or with his, with, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So what we are seeing here is the working of miracle. The ways of God are not our ways. The ways of God are not our ways. And I can see taking him out of the village tell us something about where the man was is attributed to what he's going through. Why would God decide to relocate him from where he met him to, a, to another position? So I see a translation from where he was to where God is taking him. Where he was, he could not see. They brought him to Jesus. He was at a particular spot. There was darkness all over him. But God saw his future, where he's going. Hallelujah. Where he was had limitation. But where he's going, is where God want him to be, where he will be able to see and fulfill the purpose of God for his life. Hallelujah. 
God is taking somebody from where you are with a lot of limitation to where you are supposed to be. But there is a process. We have to agree with him. First, by giving him our hand, by giving him our heart, by giving him everything that belongs to us, and allow him to lead us. Amen. Somebody, you are not getting what God is saying. Hallelujah. This man was a blind man. He was in a position that could not help himself. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God took him. He was a blind man. Whenever you, a man that is blind is full of limitation. You can't see. You can't see the people around you. You can't see your business. You can't see your family. You can't see your future. You can't see where you are going to. But when you allow God to hold your hand, when you allow God to speak his word into your spirit, when you allow God to guide you, to lead you, to show you the path into your destiny, then you are able to fulfill it in the name of Jesus. Please, can we take that 23 again? Taking the blind man by the hand, he led him out of the village. He led him out of the village. And after a place of limitation, a place where he was in one spot. He could not achieve many things in his life. He could not fulfill purpose. And after spitting on his eyes and laying his hand, his hands on him, mm -hmm. hallelujah, Amen. he asked him, do you see anything? Listen to me. The Bible says he spat on his eyes. There, were another, there was another case where he spat on the, the, yeah. the ground. They make, uh, make the mud and put on the blind, the blind man the yeah. Because that is the beginning, that is creation. Everything came, yes, from the dead. Hallelujah. So we are all we are connected to the to the dead. Hallelujah. So he spat on the man's eye. He he spat. Yes, continue, please. He spat on the man's eyes. Both eyes, yes. And laying his hands on him. And laying, oh, and laying his hands on him, he asked him, do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking around. Hallelujah. Amen. It means the miracle was not complete. The people came requesting, believing in God, that he should just touch the man. And the man will receive his sight. But we see a, a, a process, working of miracle taking place. Hallelujah. Jesus had to help the hand of the man. The Bible says he took him out of the village. In the process of taking him out, he spat on his eyes. Then laying his hands on the man. Hallelujah. Amen. Then he asked him, do you see anything? I'm talking about Jesus. Ah, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus, who is God, led by the Spirit, full of the Spirit. After the process of the miracle, he asked him, in the case of blind Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus did he ask him anything? Yes, but in the case of this man, <laughs> he asked him, do you see anything? It means it was a process, and there's supposed to be an alignment, your faith. Do you see anything? Let me stand with you over here. This is powerful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is powerful. Hallelujah. Amen. Anointing of God upon him. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The word of God is coming out of him. Revelation is coming out of him. Amen. Hallelujah. You see the work of God. Do you see anything? God touches you. He takes you by the hand. He leads you by the way. And he asks you, because when the people came, they came with their faith. 
but the man did not enter in his faith. So the Lord now asks him, is as your faith brought you to see anything? Please continue. Please continue. Ah, Jesus. <laughs> Give us a revelation of God. <laughs> so, do you see anything? Let's get a response. Please read. Verse 24. And he looked up and said, I see people. But I see people. I see people. Yes. But they look. But. What does but stand for? <laughs> I see people. Full stop. <laughs> yeah, but when you say but, it means you, you are, con what you are saying now, it will contradict what you said earlier, earlier on. I see people, but they look like tree. People look like tree. <laughs> yeah, a tree. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. It says, I see people, but they look like trees walking around. People who look like trees. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This was a man that could not see at all. For him to say, I see people. Though I see, but it's not clear. There are many things God has revealed to us. Some of us will even have dreams. But when we get up in the morning, it doesn't, it's not clear. So you have to ask God to make it clear. If not, you will do the wrong thing. Hallelujah. Amen. You have to ask him because in, initially the man could not see. And we could see the, 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 the working of miracles. It has been a process. It has been a process. Holding his hand, took him out of the village. The Bible says he spat on the man's eyes. Then he lay his hands, both hands, upon him. And he then asked him, what do you see? Hallelujah. So the man said, I see people, but what I am seeing is not clear. It tells us that something has started taking place in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. It's a walking of miracle. You can feel pains on your leg, for example, and when you come for prayers and you are being prayed for, when you stand up, you are still feeling the pain. But you have to accept that the pain is gone. There have to be that alignment with your faith and the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I see men, but they look like trees. They are not supposed to look like trees. They are supposed to look like rain men. In other words, the miracle has started, but it is, it, it is being distorted. It's not clear. I have to continue in the place of prayer, believing in God, to make it clear for me. Hallelujah. Whatever God has done in your life, as he is touching you more and more, anything that was not clear, by the power of God, let it become clear. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. let it become clear. Let it become clear. Can you turn it into a prayer for one minute? Whatever God has revealed unto me, I call it, Lord God, for yes. clarity. Yes, I yes. I call it, Lord God, for clarity. Yes, Lord. Let it become clearer yes, and clearer. Yes, Lord God. Every thing that was written, bring it to clarity, Lord God. Bring it to clarity, Lord. Everything that in the destiny, bring it to clarity. Bring it into clarity. Every idea that you have planted, bring it to clarity, Lord God. Every healing, God. Yes. Bring it to clarity. Yes, Lord. Mama, sorry, buddy. Yeah. Bring it to clarity. Bring it to 
clarity, Lord God. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. 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 Yes, L
But something happened when he touched the man. The man that was not seen at all began to see, but it was not clear. So each time we come for fellowship, each time we pray, each time we worship, each time we sing praise to God or do the things that God wants us to do, there is a touch. There is a touch. The more we do it, the more his power find expression in us. Hallelujah. So once is not enough. Twice is not enough. We have to be consistent. Hallelujah. The more you do, because the power of God is in us, but he needs to find expression. So the more we keep doing what he asks us to do at a particular time, that is how we see the fullness of his glory being revealed. Hallelujah. Then again, yeah. Then again, Jesus laid his hands on his eyes, and the man stared in intently, and his sight was completely restored. And the man stared intently. Yeah. And his sight was completely restored, and he began to see everything clearly. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 26. And he sent him to his home, saying, Do not even enter the village. You see? Amen. The village where he took him from. That, that he took him out. Because I'm believing that the situation of the man has is, he has something connected to what he's going through. Where Jesus found him, and in relation to what he's suffering from, there is, a, there is a connection. There is a force in that place that has, that is, that contributed to what the man is going. That is why the first, for the miracle to be perfected, the first thing is that Jesus held him. Saying, get out is not enough. <laughs> he had to, <laughs> he held him by the hand. There are people that you will tell them, Go. Others, you need to hold them to go with them. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. The case of that man, he had been there for a long time. So Jesus, by the Spirit, knew that what that man is going through is connected to where he yes, Just like for God to use Abraham, exactly. God had to take him, take him out. Because if he stays there, the idol will not let him go. <laughs> there are some places we need to get out of. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where I am living, I'm getting out of there. <laughs> you don't understand what I'm saying. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where, can you put it again for us, please? Is spiritual. Most of us will look at things from the physical perspective. But Jesus, by the leading of the Spirit, he saw, the Bible says, he said to him, he sent him to his home, saying, do, do not even enter the village. How will he get to his home without going through the village? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Through that, yeah, through that, that yeah, that village. Hallelujah. <laughs> so let God reveal to us. Go, go, go to 24. And he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking around. Then take note, take note. Go, go back to 24. And he looked up. A man that cannot see. But when he received the touch, after the, 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 the process of the miracle that we have looked at in 22 and 23, the Bible says the man's face was activated 
and he looked up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot the spirit of God is yes, he looked at. You are supposed to look at. But the Bible says he looked up. <laughs> so that is deep. He looked up. We look up unto who? Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So we have to look up unto him. He says, I will look up unto the hills from where's come my help. So he looked up. I believe after the touch, he knew that for him to maintain his sight, then he has to look up unto Christ. Hallelujah. So God is, 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 is ministering to us that we have to look up unto him at every given time in our life. We have to look up unto Christ. And he see, that is when he was able to see, when his focus was on him, by this, because you look up in this, your spirit is up. Your spirit is, is, in, is connected. When your spirit is alive, it's activated, it means your spirit is up. When your spirit is down, you are weak, you are depressed, you can't do the things of God. But when you obey the word of God, when the word comes into your spirit and for you to act, your spirit needs to be up. Your spirit needs to be up. Hallelujah. So he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. That was the process of the miracle. He was able to see people. He was able to see people. Somebody that could not see at all. So God is saying, as you are receiving a touch from him, you will begin to see. But this time you will see clearly. You will see clearly in the name of Jesus. Can you continue, please? Verse 25. Then again Jesus laid his hands on his eyes, and the man stared intently, and his sight was completely restored. And he began to see everything clearly. And he sent him to his home, saying, Do not even enter the village. Okay, stop there. Okay. He says, verse 24, uh, King James. He says, And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. Verse 25. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. So we are seeing it again for the second time. Verse 24, give, give us a King, uh, King James. And he, looked, and he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. Verse 25. After that, he put his hand, that is Jesus, he put his hands again upon his eyes. And, and what? And made him look up. And he was restored. So he had to look up to, that is, to align his faith to the word of God. A blind man, you are down. But when, once you are healed, you look up so that you can go where God is taking you to. Once you look down, you are limited. You are in a, in a circumference. You are in a circle. But when you look up, and forward, there is no limit. So he, he, he's dealing with uh, a situation that is, is from the root and giving him a permanent solution. I'm not only giving you sight, but I want you to, to where you are going, to see your future. Hallelujah. Verse 26, verse 25, he says, and when he looked up, he was restored and saw every man clearly. So that is our prayer. As God gives us a touch this morning, we'll be able to see clearly all what he has deposited in us, what we are supposed to accomplish in this life. We are supposed to see it clearly. And once you see it clearly, you walk towards that path 
then he gives you the grace. He gives you the grace to fulfill or to do his will in the name of Jesus. Verse 26. 26. Touch me one more time. Verse 26. And he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town, nor tell it to any in the town. And Jesus went out and his disciples into the town of of Caesarea, of Caesarea Philippi. And by the way, he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Whom do men say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist, but some say Elias, and others one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say he that I am? And Peter answered and said unto him, Thou art the Christ. Hallelujah. Verse Amen. 30 and the last. <clears throat> and he changed. He charged. And he charged them that they should tell no man of him. Amen. Why was he hiding his identity from them? Hallelujah. So I want us to focus on Lord, touch me again. Hallelujah. So where the town that, where the man was, had, uh, 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 there was a stronghold that kept him bound in that spot where he was. So I want us to look at our life, look at our family, look at where we walk, and uh, we look at that that blind spot, let God reveal it to us and touch us so that we should avoid it. You go to a place of work, before you know, you start behaving like the people you are working with instead of the other way around. There is a blind spot. There is, 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 there is, there is a, a, a stronghold in that place. Every organization that you see is not is governed by a spirit. Hallelujah. Every organization is governed. There are powers. One man of God said, if you are not in a sacred place, then you are in the sacred court. If God is not your source, then there is another power that you are yielding to. So I want us to pray this morning that let God touch me again. He has been touching us, and he will continue to touch us. But one thing you need to know is that inasmuch as they came with him, their request was that he should touch the blind man, just a touch, but it took him a process. That is to tell us that the ways of God are not our ways. When you are going in the presence of God, your mind should not be stiff. You should be flexible. You can come, he says, worship, you worship. You can come, he says, praise, you praise. And that is all that he wants you to do, to please him, not to please yourself. You can come with a prayer request. At the end, you don't even table it before him. Just follow the lyrics or the, 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 the ways of the spirit. Hallelujah. Because these people, following their belief, their faith in God, and all this process that Jesus went to, it would have brought doubt. This is the Messiah. We have seen, it, seen him do it again and again for others. How is our own case taking too long? <laughs> asking questions. Yeah, asking questions. <laughs> How is, yes, because it was just a touch. And they believed truly. The Bible says they besought him to touch him. They knew that just a touch would have solved the problem. And at the end of the day, they would go back rejoicing and sharing the testimony. But it took a long process for the miracle to take place. That is to tell us that the ways of God are not our ways. When you come to him, you have to have an open mind. When you come to him, you just have to worship him and allow him to walk through you. Hallelujah. We can't define the way God should do things in our life. He doesn't work that way. Hallelujah. God is telling somebody, 
that area in your life that you are experiencing blindness is going to touch you this morning. And when he touch yes, you, Lord. it might take some process. Mm. It might take some process. Yes, God. But at the end, you will see clearly. Yes, Lord. You will see the vision. Yes, Lord. You will see your, your family. Yes, Lord. You will see your career. Mm. You will see the passion for the yes, loss. Lord. That vision that yes, God has Lord. instilled in you. Yes, Lord. As we begin to pray, God, God. it will come out clearly. Lord, God. Lord touch yes, me Lord. again. Yes, Lord. Not according to my own way. Ah, yes, Lord. Not according to my own way ways. Yes, Lord. But let it be by your ways. Yes, Lord. Lord, touch me. Yes, Lord. The Bible says he God's held God. the man by the hand. He took him out of the village. Yes, Lord. He spat on his face. Mm. This time around, mm. he lay his hands. Yes, His Lord. hand, not just one. Ah, yes, Lord. His hand, both hands Lord. upon the man. Mm. And then he went further to ask the man, do you see anything? Mm. He is but God. He's supposed to know so yes. that by a touch yes. from him, but, but, the man is supposed to see. Mm. But he went ahead to ask him, do you see anything? No, no, Listen to me. Mm. At times when God asks you a question, mm. like the case of blind Bartimaeus, mm. the Bible says, mm. Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Mm. Knowing fully that the man is a blind man. Ah, yes. He wanted to get it from the heart or from the lips of the man mm. to tell him exactly mm. what he want him yes, to do. Lord. Listen to me. Mm. When you come to God, mm. just be willing Oh, my God, yes, just be willing to have an open heart yes. and to speak the word to him, yes, to speak his word to him. Mm -hmm. Then he will fulfill it in your life. Lord. Open your mouth and begin to Lord, declare. Lord, touch me one Lord, more time. Touch me one touch more time. Touch me again. Yes, God. Touch, touch me yes. again. Yes, Lord. I need God. a touch from you, Lord. Oh, yes. I need a touch from you. I need a touch from you. And when he touches you, May you look up in your spirit. The Bible says he caused the man to look up. He caused him to look up, to look into the future, to look into the destiny where he's taking him to, to look unto Christ, the author and finisher of his faith. He caused the man to look up. When he touched you, may you look up. May you look up means may you be awakened in your spirit forever depend on him. Moses Eliyalata. Open your mouth and begin to talk to him. We need clarity, Lord. Touch me one more time. Touch me one more time. Touch me one more time. 
There are some situations in life that are very resistant. There are very resistant. You see, after Jesus, Jesus' first action, the man's vision was only partially restored. This is the only miracle of Jesus in which healing did not occur immediately. Jesus may have done it this way to illustrate the disciples' gradual enlightenment. One touch is not enough. That is why we just need to remain or to abide in the sacred place of the Lord. Yes. The Bible says, Our light affliction is but for a moment. For out of it, Is 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 bad for a moment. We have things that we go through in life as believers. It's not there to destroy you, but it's there to strengthen you, that your dependence on God will be forever. Then how can God touch a man for the first time and the faith of the people was that just a touch the man will be healed but this time around he touched he held him by the hand the process it took a, a process by the leading of the spirit Jesus will not do anything without being led by the Spirit of God. That situation in your life that has been stubborn, that has been there resisting, the more you stay in the presence of God, the more He gives you the grace that in the midst of whatever you go through, you are still bold to tell him that you love him. You are still bold enough to tell him to obey his word, to go out and preach. You are still bold enough to pray. You are still bold to worship him. again, 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 and again. I need a touch. I need a touch. Touch me all over, Lord. Touch me on my head. Touch me on my body. Touch me on my feet. Let me gain speed. Touch me on my head. Touch me on my eyes. Let my vision be clear. Touch my ears. Let me hear your voice. Clearly, touch me, Lord. Touch my mouth. That when I speak, the utterances that comes out of my mouth will be able to heal, will be able to bless. Let the word of my mouth be blessing. Touch me, Lord. Touch my hands, Lord. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Let Him touch you. Let Him touch your family. Let Him touch you. Let God I touch you. God. I need a touch. Oh, I need a touch. Mose telly touch popularity, Lord God. I need clarity. I need clarity. I need clarity, Lord. Shall I tell you, Baba, 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 Baba,
Moses Elia la yes, Lord God I ke bose let my spirit look up. Let my spirit look up unto Jesus. I need clarity, Lord. Yes, Lord God. I need clarity. To where you are taking me to. I need clarity. I need clarity. The purpose of God in my life, I need clarity. Yes, Lord Jesus. The vision of God for my life. The will of God for my life. I need clarity. I need clarity. Hey, shit, hey, brother. Moses, After the man began to see clearly, in order to maintain that healing, in order to maintain that healing, God told him, don't go back to the village. Yes, Lord. As you receive clarity, the things that causes distraction in your life, you will not go back to them. As you receive clarity, you will start immediately to do that which God wants you to do without postponing it, yes. without procrastination. As you receive clarity, you will start to execute that which God wants you to do. In the name of Jesus, we declare clarity for your vision. Yes, the Lord. vision of the church, the yes, vision in your life as an individual, yes, Lord God. the vision for your family. May we receive clarity as we receive the touch from the Almighty, as we receive a touch from God, as we receive touch from the Almighty God. Let there be clarity. Let there be clarity. Let there be clarity. Let there be clarity. Shale de branso seli yalata. Mose seli yalato. Ika branso seli yalata. Manteri yalato.
from the Lord, let your vision, let your future, let the path that God has set for you, let it become clearer and clearer in the name of Jesus Christ. He's giving you a touch this morning so that you can receive clarity, so that you can get clarity to where you are going to. Yes, Lord. Where you at has been limiting you all this while, but he's taking you by the hand out of that spot of darkness, out of that spot of blindness, out of that spot of limitation, that circumference where you cannot go beyond a certain level or height in life. As God touch, touches you this morning, and hold you by the hand. He's taking you out of that village. He's taking you out of that situation. He's taking you out of that challenge. He's taking you out of that limitation. He's taking you out of that limitation. He's taking you out of that stronghold. He's taking you out of that altar that has kept you bound, that has kept you down. That has kept you down. He's taking you out in the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe you are not blind physically. Oh, Shadeli Yalata. But you are facing poverty. That is your own area of blindness. Oh, God. We pray. That as you receive clarity, God is giving you an idea that will take you from poverty to riches, from poverty oh. to wealth, in the name of Jesus. Yes, For those of you watching me that have not yet known him, that is your own blindness. You, you, you are not yet in the, in the covenant. I pray by the Spirit of God, yes, as the Word of God is reaching you, let let it, let it be a touch in your life. In the name of yes, Jesus, Lord. as you accept him in your life, may you receive clarity. Yes, may Lord. you receive purpose. May you receive clarity. In the name of Jesus, those of you who are suffering from health challenge, that is your own blindness. I pray for you. As God touched you this morning, may you come out of that challenge, that yes, sickness. Lord. In the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. any sickness in your body, any sickness in your lineage, we destroy it by the, the power of, of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus the Bible says he caused the man, he causes him to look up. Let your spirit be awakened, that your eyes will remain focused on Jesus. He caused him to look up. Let your spirit look up to him. Let your spirit look up to Jesus. Let your spirit look up to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. In the name of Jesus Christ. Man says Elialato, E Capro Sosselialat, Man de 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 de
We need a touch. We need a touch. We need a touch. Take me out of this level into another level of glory. He had to take the man. He had to walk with the man. Yes, Lord God. God is walking with somebody now. Yes, Lord God. From where you are to where you are supposed to be. There is a shifting. Yes, there is Lord a God. shift. There is a shift. There is a shift. There is a shift. Can we do it prophetically? There is a shift from where you are to your new place in life. There is a shift. There is a shift. He held the man by the hand and began shifting him. He began shifting the man. He began shifting him. Yes, Lord there was God. a transition. There was a transition from blindness to vision. From darkness to light. From poverty to riches. From sickness to health to good health. Hey, hey, you are coming out of the village. You are coming out of that village. You are coming out of that village. Village of limitation. Village of setback. Village of misfortune. Yes, Lord. Village of misfortune, setback, yes, corruption. Lord. You are coming out. You are coming out. You are stepping into your inheritance. Hey, Capronso, Deli Yalata. Monse Deli Yalato. Yes, Lord. in the presence of God and go back to sin. When you come in the presence of God, we have been watered. We are in the pool of water where he washes us. According to the level of our faith, something is leaving us every day and something is adding. What, what comes from him is what is adding. What is from the devil that is still in us is leaving us every day. There is never a day you will come in the presence of God and there is, you don't, there, there is no shift. Yes. You might not pick it in the spirit, but I want to tell you by the word that we have received this morning. From the time he grabbed the man from his hand, see when he, the man was able to see clearly, there was a process that took place. All was the process of the working of miracle. Nothing was, nothing was done just for, for pleasure. It was all by the leading of the Spirit. It was all by the leading of the Spirit. The man could not understand spiritual things. But you and I, we are getting there. Day by day, we are becoming like him day by day. To understand him better. To understand his ways better. Each time I come into his presence, oh, I am being washed. Yes, something is leaving me. Then what comes from him is adding into my life. 
That situation that has been resistance. You haven't been picking a signal from the spirit. There is a word for somebody. You are seen clearly. You are seen clearly. You are receiving your sight fully restored. Fully restored. Your health restored. Your business restored. Your marriage restored. Your education, that of your children, your family, they are fully restored. In the name of Jesus Christ, there is power. There is power. There is power in His presence. There is healing. There is deliverance. There is freedom. In the name of Jesus. Le Prato Cecilia Natal. 